Hello, welcome again to GRA Small Engine Shop Talk, and today we're going to look at porting a two-stroke engine, specifically for a chainsaw, for more airflow, which equals more power. Uh, we got an example here of a steel 066 54 millimeter chainsaw, piston and cylinder. Uh, some demonstration we're going to show you. We're going to get into some of the tools you got, some of the techniques we're going to use. Uh, we're not going to get into exact numbers. Uh, it's beyond the scope of this little video. We're just going to kind of show you how to go about doing this, kind of get you started. Uh, sometimes numbers are always thrown around and some of the basics get uh, get lost in the process. Uh, some of the things you're going to need, uh, paramount would be safety goggles, a coveralls or a uh, apron such as this. Uh, these aluminum shavings get everywhere and they kind of meld into your hands and onto your clothes and you go to wash them and they get on other clothes and it doesn't make you happy nor does it make your wife happy. Uh, here's a caliper which is a good idea. Take initial measurements and to measure your progress especially if you have uh, your numbers figured out of what your end result wants. You want your end result to be. If files, obviously there's a lot more files than that but you can always file it the old-fashioned way, and they're always good, even if you have air tools, to uh, to slow down and, and check things with the file. Uh, an air tool, an air cutter, with a cutter bit on it. There's a multitude of different bits you can buy for these, and probably will need. A flashlight's good, and various hand tools, power tools, what have you. Uh, you can also use a electric Dremel with uh, all the bits that they come with. One of the things you want to do to remember is to work slow. It's always uh, it's always easy to take off more material, just like everybody always says, then put it back on. Here's one thing: if you have access to or can have access to extra parts, you know it doesn't have to be for your model, but if it is, it's better because it you know kind of gives you an idea of what you're going to be doing. You see this cylinder here, which we'll demonstrate on right there in the port transfer window has uh, looks like the wrist pin started to come out and kind of blew a hole there which in essence will make this cylinder junk so it's a good one to practice on so over here we have the steel 66 uh, that has been redone um, had port work done new rings new bearings and uh, it doesn't look like it's in that great a shape but it sure does cut so here we have your stock cylinder and here we have the cylinder that has had work done and notice a couple fins are broke off not a big deal so you look at what you want to do to make airflow from here to here the best you can within the parameters you have to work with so the first thing we want to look at is opening up the cylinder wall at the port to your desired dimension. Now one thing I want to say is I, you try and stay away from opening too much, taking too much material off the bottom or the top of this port because you're going to change your timing and if you go too far you're going to get into uh, stuff you don't need and want and you're not going to see the performance gains that you desire uh, especially for you know if this is actually a working saw or a firewood saw it's usually unnecessary so what you want to do is take most of your material off of these lateral edges and you're going to get your opening where you want it now you can only go as far, and you don't want to stretch the limit too much, is as far as the piston will allow you on the side of the skirt. Because if you go too far, you're going to be allowing gases from underneath to escape and get to where you do not want them, and it will kill your performance. So now you got the hole opened up to where you want. You've done most of the work on your lateral edges. You've made them nice and round and smooth. Now you want to look at taking away any bit of air turbulence you can find. Now you can have 
the inlet side of your intake bigger than your, well, I guess you'd say outlet side of your intake because you want the most restriction that you have right at your cylinder wall. You want to make sure that everything flows to there fine so it gets into the cylinder. Now you're going to look at the stock cylinder and it has casting imperfections. And you look down and there's a little bit of a ridge that runs here. There's a ridge that comes out here and you're going to see how it's going to disrupt the airflow. So you want to take your port work, you want to eliminate as much of that as you can. And if you see how these ridges are here and on the port work it's essentially smooth. Anywhere that this air comes in it's got a straight shot into the cylinder itself. Now you're going to do the same thing on the on the exhaust side, given your numbers, and you're going to want to do this what I call reverse megaphone effect. So you want to make sure that at the point of exit of the cylinder wall is where you have the most air restriction. Everywhere from there can come out. That way you know you're getting the most air in and the most air out then you don't have to have it polished mirror finish but you're going to want it smooth you can see the difference between the two now you get all your cylinder work done and you slap your saw back together and you don't see much performance increase a lot of people talk about porting your muffler out which is a good idea uh, rule of thumb about seventy percent of area of your exhaust port but one thing that kind of gets overlooked is there's more to porting the muffler than just taking the screen out and opening up the exit hole. If you go and slap that muffler on that cylinder, you can see you put your gasket on there. You're essentially not going to gain anything because you will have all this material here blocking the air from getting out of your motor. So what you want to do is bolt up a gasket and match it to the opening so you can bolt it then onto the muffler and make your marks, make your lines and match it to your muffler so you know for sure that the air that's coming out of here is not impeded here. So the only restriction you have is the amount that you need right at the very end. You can open up your baffles a little bit to make sure that, that, that uh, no air gets trapped in there. It's always a good idea. So there you have it. Uh, you bolt that back on and, and uh, check your compression. And don't get too carried away on compression. You get too high a compression and you're either going to be hitting the top of the cylinder or you're going to be making too much compression and it's actually going to be detrimental to the to the engine. Uh, I would uh, I would suggest sanding your decking and putting a thin gasket on and seeing where you're at and if you want to get more into uh, deck height and squish you can test that. Play-Doh works pretty good for that. Uh, mock it up and pull it over and see how much room you have left between the top of the cylinder the bottom of the top of the cylinder and the top of the piston. Uh, I like to actually machine the decking. I would rather do machine the decking a little bit and put on a good gasket. Some guys run with no gasket. I think it's better to run with a gasket, just my opinion. Uh, but a lot of times you don't have access to that type of equipment. And, you know, doing it slow by hand can get you there. You just watch what you're doing. Uh, that's it. Uh, if I can get this tripod set up for this camera, we'll actually sit down and do some port work on this uh, junk cylinder and uh, show you exactly how you go about cutting it open. Uh, thanks for watching. Oh, another thing. Uh, if you have any intake gaskets, you've got to match your intake gaskets too. Uh, you can get into opening up your muff or your putting a bigger air filter on to make sure that you have enough air coming in 
But the main thing is to make sure that the most restriction you have is right at that point and that point because what you want is to be able to get the air from here to here or from here to here as fast as you can. So, any questions, let me know. Email me, contact me. Uh, I'm sure there's a few things I misspoke on and probably be well aware of here in the coming days. And uh, other than that, good luck and, and by all means have fun doing it. Thank you.